Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Listen, want to talk to you. Why every man should fall in love. Why every man should fall in love. Let me tell you. You know, I, I know there's people out there saying why men shouldn't fall in love and all this and that. It's, it's absurd. It is absurd. It is ignorant. It is foolish. Because I'm telling you, I'm a man that's in love. I'm a man that's in love. And some, they say don't fall in love because a woman unfaithful and all of this and may cheat and all of this. Listen, when you choose a good woman with, with your right mind and your right heart, with the right intentions, you know a good woman when you see one. If you chose a woman that's a no good woman just because she had a big booty, just because she had some money, you know, from her, whatever she does, illegal lifestyle, you know, tax fraud, real estate fraud, you know, or, or immoral lifestyle. If, if she a sex worker or whatever it may be. And she and that's that's why you wanted her because of her shape, her body, her looks and all of this. And then you get cheated on. You got what you deserve because you chose thinking with your small head instead of your big head. And so that's that's your fault. So a lot of these guys come talking about, oh, women unfaithful and a woman to cheat on. You fall in love and then you get cheated on. You choosing the wrong woman. And, that, and that's, that's going to happen. You, you chose her thinking with the wrong head. Another reason I hear, oh, you know, don't fall in love because you come weak and you don't have any power in the relationship and, 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 and you lose your purpose. You can't focus on your purpose. What, what it look like I'm doing right now? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm serving my purpose. I'm serving the purpose. I, I, I tour the world. I have 11 companies, over 50 streams of income. I've written more books than I can count. And you know why I was able to produce so much? So to you guys that's not falling in love, how, how much have you produced? And what you have produced, how has it changed the world? So you may look at somebody like a P. Diddy and say, oh, well, he never fell in love. And, and, and look, he's about to be a billionaire. What has he produced? Uh, music. OK. What has that music done for the world? Biggie Smalls got shot and killed. Tupac got shot and killed. So it's like you could produce something. You could produce something. You could make a lot of money. But is it benefiting you or is it benefiting society? Is it moving the world forward? Is it making lives happier? Is it building the foundation of the world, which is the family structure. If men don't fall in love, then our marriages are null and void. Or we don't have marriage. And if we don't have marriage and we don't have healthy marriage, then we don't have healthy homes because our kids don't see healthy examples. They see a man who is afraid. They see a man who is a grown boy. They see a, they see a man who is afraid to fall in love with their mother. What does that teach your daughter if you are afraid to fall in love with her mother? What does that teach your son if you are afraid to fall in love with his mother? If you talk down to his mother, if you think that you are better than their mother, if you are a dictator, you are domineering, you are controlling, you are condescending because you don't want to fall in love. So you treat one, a woman like property. You treat a woman like your possession. You treat a woman like she is dispensable, expendable. You treat a woman like nothing. And then you can't say, well, oh, no, I don't treat a woman like nothing. I treat a woman with respect. I treat a woman with, you know, utmost respect. No, because the utmost respect would be to fall in love. The utmost respect would be to give her your whole heart. See, love is one of the greatest, is the greatest place to operate from. So when you truly fall in love, that is when you live your purpose. See, a man cannot become a real man unless he learns how to love the greatest gift that God has given to man, which is a woman. Because a woman pushes the world forward. She pushes life forward. You don't exist without a woman. You're not here without a woman. You say, well, oh, well, I'm not here without a man because a man had to have, you know, sperm. But that sperm is useless without an egg. 
that fertilizes it. That fertilized egg is useless without a female body to carry it. Then that baby is useless without a woman to give birth to that baby, to feed that baby, to take care of that baby, feeding the baby every two hours around the 24 hour clock. That's a woman doing that, not a man. And the woman is built to where if she can't afford milk, she can feed the milk from her. She can feed the baby from her bosom. I need you to understand the power and the majesty and the fearfulness and the wonderfulness a woman was created with. And as men, we got to stop putting our foot on the neck of a woman thinking that this is our enemy and this is our opponent. A woman is not your opponent. A woman is your teammate. And if you are a good leader, if you are a good person, if you are a good teammate, she will reciprocate. If you ain't worth nothing, if you have ulterior motives, if you're thinking with your small head instead of your big head, she going to beat you at your game. So a lot of men come talking, about, oh, these women dogs and these women this, and I'd have been hurt by a woman. I'd have been hurt by a woman. Guess what? That woman saw you and she saw you naked. What I mean by this, I don't mean physically. She saw you naked spiritually. She knew you just wanted her for her big butt, for her breasts, for her sex. She knew you wanted her for the wrong reasons. She knew you wanted her so you could feel better about yourself. Because if I could get her based on her looks, because she looked this way and she looked that way, then that make me a man. So when she cheated on you, she cheated on you because she was broken. And guess what? She was broken by another man. She was broken by her absent father. She was broken by her no good ex-boyfriend, her no good ex-husband. See, if you give a woman a good father, if you give a woman a good man, a good boyfriend, a good husband, her life changes. So at the end of the day, what we deal with, with what we call no good women, a no good woman comes from a no good man. A no good man comes from a no good man because the father has great influence in the home. But if this father afraid to fall in love, then he's afraid to become a real man. He's afraid to know himself. He's afraid to come into the knowledge of who he was created to be. If a father, if a man does not appreciate his real, then he can't breathe. He can't live a whole life. So if a man cannot appreciate the being that was created from his being, if you as a man cannot love and respect the being that was created from your being. If you think the being who was created from your being is expendable, disposable, useless, worthless, beneath you, you are not a man and you are not fit to lead. You are not fit to live. So you got to understand that the gift you were given in the form of a woman is the greatest gift you can receive. And through that woman, she can help you have other great gifts, your children. But don't tell me you love your children, but despise the woman you lie down with to have those children from. It doesn't go together. If you hate her, you hate your child. And you're going to say I'm lying, but you got to think deeper than how you're thinking. Because you show a child love. By the way you treat their mother. And if you've got their mother under your foot, you and this man, this, this man hating group, this, this woman hating group, you know, this men above all else, this, this men without women, this men above women, whatever y'all calling this here movement y'all in that is ridiculous and stupid and ignorant. That is breaking down the world, that is breaking down society, that is breaking down our women, that is breaking down our household is foolish. It is foolish and it's from the pit of hell. It is from the pit of hell. That is an attack from Satan himself on the household, on the family structure, on the family unit to have men who are bitter and who are broken, still broken from the daddy wounds and from your mama wounds. And you get offended when somebody call you a grown boy. You get offended when somebody call you immature. But listen, I got to call a spade a spade because I was a dog. I was a woman. I was I was everything. But I had to look myself in the mirror and say, Tony, you a punk. Tony, you lost. Tony, you a grown boy. Tony, you immature. 
use a pump because a man don't disrespect women. A man don't use women. A man don't juggle women. A man don't put his foot on the neck of a woman. A man knows how to love, how to cherish, how to honor, how to respect God's greatest gift to him. That's what a man is. That's what a man does. And if you can't do that, you ain't no man. And if you're not a man, then you need to shut up and sit down and learn from a real man until you can become a man. Because I'm fed up and tired of the grown boys out here ruining society. Well, God trying to bring clarity, you bringing confusion. Well, God trying to build up unions, you trying to create discord. It's ignorant and it's stupid. And it's an attack from the adversary. You're being used by Satan himself. Don't even mention the name of God. If you tearing up happy households, if you if, if you putting men against women, putting women against men, we need to come together and have a dialogue and have understanding to seek to understand, then be understood and build happy, happy and healthy relationships, which turn into a happy and healthy household, which which raise happy and healthy, good citizens of the world which will eradicate and eliminate teenage pregnancy, crime, killing, stealing, rape, abuse. When you got two happy, healthy people raising happy, healthy kids, you changing the world and making the world a better place. But if all you believe in is getting a woman on her back, dumping your sperm in her, making her carry your child, just so you could be a weekend daddy, and then show up when your child become a doctor or a lawyer or a pro athlete based on the, the blood, sweat and tears of that woman who was there with that child five out of them seven days a week. And you was there on the weekends and you just made a phone call or a FaceTime every day. And now you think you deserve some money from your child who have made it. And now you want to show up. Man, shut up and sit down. Because you're the problem with the world. And until you confront that truth. Until you honest with yourself and realize that the world going the way it is because of the way you treating your woman. Because you perpetuating the cycle and that your daughter going to grow up and be treated just like the way you treat her mother. And that your son going to grow up and treat women the same way you treating his mother. You perpetuating the cycle. And guess what? I could speak to it because I was a part of it. I was one of the worst. I probably was worth 10 times worse than you is right now. That's why I'm telling you, you got to get your stuff together. You got to stop being sensitive. You got to stop making excuses. And you got to start making changes. All y'all men want to talk about, all y'all want to talk about is money, 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 money. How much money can I make? How much, how, how on the grind can I be? You got to grind. You got to grind. You got to get up four o'clock in the morning. You got to grind. You got to work. You got to work. You got to work. You got to love. You got to learn how to treat a woman. You got to get married and be faithful. You got to raise healthy kids, happy kids who are prepared for the world. That's what you got to do. Bump your business, bump your money, take care of your love. That's what we created for as humans, not to make money, to have love, to create love, to cultivate love. That's what's going to push society forward, not just money. See, if you have love and you have character and you have dignity and you have integrity, you can make all the money in the world. At the end of the day, it ain't nothing but paper being printed and being recycled. That's all that is. That's useless. What actually is power is love. Every man needs to fall in love because that will introduce you to manhood real manhood that will introduce you to purpose real purpose that will introduce you to prosperity real prosperity that will introduce you to peace real peace that's what love is and that's why the holy bible says that love is the greatest gift given to mankind not money it actually says the love of money is the root of all evil. A lot of people misquote that and say money is the root of all evil. The Bible don't say that. It says love, the love of money 
is the root of all evil because it also says that money answereth all things. So it understands that money has power. But it clearly states that the greatest gift given to mankind is love. If you get love and you learn how to love, money will chase you. Hear me when I tell you. And guess what? You don't need a billion dollars to be prosperous. True prosperity is peace. And true peace comes from love. I don't have in the bank the money that Jeff Bezos has, the money that P. Diddy has, the money that these, you know, these, these bachelors with millions and billions have. I don't have the money in the bank, but guess what? I'm worth more and I'm richer than they are because I have peace, which is prosperity, the real prosperity, and it comes from love. Self-love, then giving love, then allowing someone to love you in return. Purely, wholly, fully, uninhibited, just pure, unadulterated, love that's power that's peace that's prosperity get with it hey this is tony gaskins we'll talk soon